What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are discussing Detroit Lions training camp. Day number nine, takeaways and observations. So let's get it started. What's up, guys? Jeremy Davis here, wide receiver for the Detroit Lions. Just want to encourage the Lions fans and any football fans in general to subscribe to my guy's channel, Dose of Dion. Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. It is good to be back for part two of Detroit Lions training camp takeaways. Now we got to get right in this thing because there are a lot of things to talk about. But before we get it started, let's go check out the whiteboard worthy comment of the video. This one says, check the community. It's pretty darn simple, y'all. In the community, I have some links so that you guys can go sign up for some fo fantasy football leagues in my league, okay? Right now we have two leagues currently. We have one for channel members and one for non-channel members. The one for non-channel members, we may actually end up, end up doing two depending on how many people sign up, but it's limited, okay? There's limited space. So get over there, sign up as quickly as possible if you guys want to be in it, and also vote on when you want the draft to be. If you are a channel member, we post out just for you guys that only you guys can see that you guys can sign up, and uh, that one's pretty much guaranteed. And there's also going to be an award if you guys win that one. So and look, if you're a channel member, you might as well sign up. This is a great perk that I think uh, you guys can get involved in. Now, we have a lot of things to discuss. In our last video, our part one, we discussed uh, the participation report, players that were injured. We went through all of that stuff. But in today's video, we have a lot of on the field observation. Now, this video is coming out a little bit later we got our observations a little bit later basically there was a thunderstorm in detroit this morning so there was no live show which we thought there would be so they couldn't do the outside show there's no show this morning there may be one tomorrow no show so they're practicing indoors and since they're practicing indoors many of the media members cannot report what's going on indoors because they can't get indoors because they have not been going through the testing and things like that so there was only a few media members that actually got to see the practice and that's whose takeaways we are going to be looking at in today's video so kind of a strange situation but we do have a lot of takeaways like if you want to hear about your favorite player you've come to the right place we basically have the lions entire practice in today's video so we're going to fly through it okay i'm not going to be uh, going too specific on certain details because there's a lot to get into so let's just get it started all right the first player we're going to talk about is ty johnson the lions running back ty johnson the former maryland draft pick the day three draft pick now Ty Johnson has been extremely underrated this offseason. Not enough people are talking about Ty Johnson. Many people think that he won't make the team. But in my last final 53-man roster prediction, I had Ty Johnson on the team. Now, some people liked it. Some people did not. But one of the biggest reasons was because he has been healthy. Bo Scarborough, DeAndre Swift. Again, if you guys want the participation report from today, go check out the last video that I put up. But we know Bo Scarborough, uh, DeAndre Swift have been dealing with some injuries. So they've been missing some time. That's allowed Ty Johnson to step into that number two running back role behind Kerryon Johnson. And let's just say he's done pretty darn well. Ty Johnson looks a lot better when it comes to his decision making, right? His vision, his ability to read the holes. He has all the intangibles, right? If you want a guy that's fast, that's powerful, that's Ty Johnson. I know some people say, well, you know, he's just not going to make the team. Ty Johnson showed a lot of flashes last season. He averaged the same yards per attempt that Bo Scarborough did. And it was just a few little things that he needs to improve on, right? His vision. He needs to probably be more of a threat out of the backfield. Well, so far in training camp, that's exactly what he's been. He's been. He's been a threat in a rushing game because he's been able to read the holes, find the holes, make better decisions. And in the passing game, he has been uncoverable, right? His speed is incredible. You don't get to see it a lot. This guy is arguably our fastest running back when it comes to a dead sprint, right? If you put these guys on a 40 time, he's probably the fastest running back that we have. He had a 4 2 6 40 yard dash at his pro day. The game's about speed, so, and I got a lot of speed, he says, so uh, I've just been trying to, every single chance I get to open up, open it up. It's like having a muscle car going down the highway, you gotta open up a little bit. That is absolutely nuts. Don't forget about Ty Johnson. He's been doing so far so well. And Halsey so far, and he's been doing a lot of good things so far in a training camp. Let's continue down. Next up, Michael Ford. We touched on this in the last video. He had to deal with an injury. I'm not going to go too far into it. Uh, but Michael Ford was having a good training camp up to this point. He had several pass breakups. We know his speed is there in coverage. And he played in a lot of big moments for the Lions last season. So it's a super unfortunate time to get injured. Hopefully he's able to get back on the field soon. But it's just a super unfortunate time to get injured in his training camp. You just, you hate to see it. Also, speaking of the Detroit Lions secondary, C.J. Moore, the Lions safety, has been looking for a bigger role with the Detroit Lions defense. The Lions have been moving him around, putting him in different spots, and I think he does make the team. This is another guy that I predicted would make the final 53-man roster. I like what he gives to us on special teams, and I like that he has some experience playing that safety position. J. Ron Curse suspended for the first three games of the season. I think that he adds some depth to that position. So we'll see what role he finds for the Detroit Lions if he makes the team. I think he does, and C.J. Moore so far has been moving around defensively, and you know he's been giving us some good time on special teams. Desmond Trufant has played really well in training camp, a guy that we really haven't heard a lot about, so I love that we have some information on Desmond Trufant. Desmond Trufant's veteran leadership, one thing that I love is his ability to make a play on the football. His playmaking ability is something that he brings that Rashawn Melvin did not bring. 
when the ball is in the air, when the ball is in the receiver's hands, his ability to make a play on the football. Well, another thing that he has been adding to Detroit is his ability to mix up different coverage. Did you throw him into zone? He can throw him into man and he's going to be fine. Okay, you can put him out there at any position. You can put him on either side of the ball defensively. He has been good for the Detroit Lions. That veteran leadership has been awesome. And he's a guy that we can rely upon going into the season. He's only on the two-year deal, but he's a veteran that we can pretty much guarantee is going to be good for the Detroit Lions. You know, there's still question marks around Jeffrey Okuda being a rookie, right? He has some ups, has some downs. You're also going to see that with Desmond Trufant, obviously, but he has proven he's a guy that you can rely upon next season, and that's a huge asset for the Detroit Lions. Logan Stenberg has continued to rise his stock as kind of a slow start for Logan Stenberg, not in the starting role, and also Logan Stenberg has been taking some reps as a backup center. But with Bo Benshaw returning, Bo Benshaw getting healthy, he has been back to that guard position. Let's just say he's been pretty darn good in that second unit. Not with the first unit yet, but in the second unit, he's been a powerful offensive lineman, something that coming out of college we were expecting to get right away. That power, there's definitely a lot of things to clean up when it comes to holding and pass protection, but when it comes to run blocking, that power that he brings is something that not a lot of people have. That anger that he brings, Mr. Nasty, he was dominant today with the second team. He was able to lead a lot of running lanes for the Detroit Lions second group, and he was a place that Detroit Lions attacked over and over and over in that rushing game. So that's great to see. Inside the 20, the Lions continue to go to him, continue to run behind him, because that's what he brings in the rushing attack. And hopefully in the future, he is a big part of this offensive line with Jonah Jackson. Today, the Detroit Lions did a lot of situational work, right? They did a lot of work when it came to two-minute warnings in the red zone, in the red area, which Matt Patricia calls it, third downs, third down conversions. That's great. That's huge. For the defense. And for the offense, that's the one place that I think the Lions need to fix. When Matt Patricia and the Detroit Lions talk about closing off games, so Matthew Stafford comes up with a term that goes as dagger time, that's because that's where the Lions need to improve. Honestly, they do a lot of other things well, but they need to improve on finishing off games, getting off the field on third downs, converting on third downs, which they were much better at last season, by the way, but they still need to improve there, finishing off drives in the red zone and getting stops in the red zone, bed and don't break. That's where the Lions need to improve the most heading into next season, just statistically. So in the red area is where the Lions have been putting in a lot of work. And the Lions are looking to amp it up tomorrow, right? To get a thing going like a scrimmage. So they're working on some red zone things. They did not wear pads today. This was more of a uh, situational type of day. So no pads, but the Lions were really focused on those skill positions and making plays in the red area. We also saw Tracy Walker continue to have a good training camp. Tracy Walker, we know last couple days has been on fire. He's been known to have sticky coverage. He kind of slowed down TJ Hawkinson, and today he continued that. Tracy Walker made a beautiful play, which may have been the play of the day on Isaac Nauta. He was covering Isaac Nauta, who again, a guy that I think couldn't make the team. He was covering Isaac Nauta on a passing route to the end zone for Matthew Stafford, but he made a great play with his long reach. He was able to tip that ball. And instead of that ball just falling to the ground, oh boy, Romeo Cora was up to the ass. Romeo Cora, the Lions defensive end slash linebacker, was able to dive to the ground and make an interception, is a very strong man. He's a very in shape defensive end slash linebacker for the Lions that can move around and that has shown some athletic ability in his time in Detroit. If he can give us any Anything in passing defense, he's going to be a real threat. Uh, he's going to be a real threat to offenses. He also came up with a big time sack today as well. So big day for Romeo Okora. Haven't heard a lot about him so far through Tramp. Heard a little bit about his brother Julian, but this is huge for Romeo. That's exactly what you want to see out of a guy that's expected to take a really big role next season when the Detroit Lions didn't bring in too many pass rushers this offseason. After that great play by Romeo Okora, Matthew Stafford was able to redeem himself to Isaac Nauta once again. So Tracy Walker makes this great play, knocks the ball in the air, Romeo Cora gets an interception on Isaac Nauta. But Matthew Stafford bounces back, and this is something that Matthew Stafford has really improved on, if you ask me, and this is freezing defenders. Matthew Stafford froze the defenders very well with a great play action. So Matthew Stafford makes a great play action, throws it to Isaac Nauta, Isaac Nauta comes up with a touchdown. So a great bounce back there, freezing the defender. He actually froze Will Harris, throwing jabs back and forth. Speaking of Jeffrey Okuda in the secondary, Jeffrey Okuda, Duran Harmon, Desmond Trufant, Tracy Walker, Justin Coleman, those guys were on the field all at once. So you got to see what could be the starting lineup next season in the secondary. And let's just say they were very, very good in coverage. They gave Matthew Stafford a very difficult time. Duran Harmon came up with an interception on an overthrown ball to Marvin Hall. They were very good in coverage. They forced Matthew Stafford in some really tough decisions. They have back-to-back -back incompletions forced with eventually a touchdown to Quintus Cephas, who again continues to get his name out there. Quintus Cephas has been doing his thing. Well, Matthew Stafford eventually threw a touchdown to Quintus Cephas, but he had to hold the ball for a very long time. And again, 
like I said, that's where sacks are going to come from, man. Come on, I'm telling you, it's not a coincidence. That's where the pressure is going to come from. That secondary, and they were very sticky in coverage. So that's exactly the news that you want to hear if you are a Lions fan. If you want pressure, that's what you want to hear is that they were cut, that they were sticky in coverage defensively. And again, we didn't even bring up Amani, who's arguably had the best training camp of any cornerback that we currently have. So the secondary is looking really good. They forced Matthew Stafford in some tough decisions. They're not leaving a lot of openings in the back end for Matthew Stafford to attack. However, Quintess Sivas comes to the rescue, makes a touchdown grab. Jamal Agnew has been a bailout option for the Detroit Lions in the slot position. He can play all different positions so far on the offense that we've seen. And when the ball is in his hand, we know he is super dynamic. Danny Madola talked about today that he has the ability to catch. He can catch the ball really, really well. Able to make a huge grab over the middle on what was basically a fourth down. Jamal Agnew has been playing really well. So has Quintess Cephas. It's good to see these young guys stepping up. You know, Jamal Agnew, tough role to switch to the offense position. And rookie Quintess Cephas continues to get his name out there. Continues to shine in practice. There is no doubt in my mind that Quintess Cephas uh, makes the team. Then we got to see a little bit of the second unit work. Jamal Agnew, again, making big plays there as well. And David Blau threw a touchdown to Jamal Agnew on what was a beautiful throw, a five-yard pass uh, to Jamal Agnew over CJ Moore. David Blau is another guy that I have very high hopes. I know a lot of people don't believe in David Blau. I think David Blau could be part of the future for the Detroit Lions. David Blau, to me, I know he doesn't have all the intangibles that maybe a guy like Deshaun Kaiser has. But what David Blau gives to the table to me as a Lions fan is he gives you a guy that's cool and calm and collected under pressure that can step in there and make some big time throws very confident and he can read a defense he continues to grow and learn i'm telling you down the road maybe four or five years from now if the lions can keep you know their coaches here their general manager here, and matthew stafford here he's a guy that could step in the future i know it sounds crazy but trust me he is a guy that could be the future of the detroit lions but that's a long ways out we need to be successful now that way that does have potential uh down the road but like i said jamal new has continued to do well in special teams jack fox versus aaron sepas has been a mashup to watch today they did some punting drills but would have to pick a side and kind of root for one of the punters well today they had a little bit of a battle when it comes to making some deep kicks but also landing it inside the 20 we saw jack fox very consistent had a punt that nearly grazed the top of the inside which is something that sam martin used to give us but he made a great kick a 61 yard punt and all four of his punts were inside the 20 today for the detroit lions better than that all four of his punts were inside the 8 and 11 yard line and sipos was a little bit more inconsistent at the 6 yard line he also had one at the 11 yard line but his two other punts unfortunately rolled it to the end zone a shaky start for Aaron Sipos who was only who had his first punt go for only 39 yards but he did bounce back with a 62 yard punt which was the longest punt of today so Aaron Sipos and that battle with Jack Fox has been awesome it looked like Jack Fox had the better day today but Aaron Sipos has shown fight and he shows that he wants to win that punter role that's a great battle the Lions have great competition there just like they do at every position but also at the punter position so hey man whatever position you're at there's going to be competition except for the kicker position I think Matt Prater has won that role. Even the long snapper position has competition as of now. Going back to the situational drills, Matthew Stafford, who was pretty much boxed up early because good coverage by the Detroit Lions, which again is something that we need to hear. That's awesome to hear. With 10 seconds to remain, the Lions need to find a way to get in the end zone. There's no timeouts, only 10 seconds. Matthew Stafford finds Marvin Hall on a 44 yard bomb. That's deep ball hall at its finest on Jeffrey Okuda, who had a great day today, who was really good in coverage, but allowed the biggest play of the day, a 44 yard pass for a touchdown to end practice. Okuda was in great position. He just didn't get his hands on the football. Right there, right where he needed to be, he just missed the ball somehow, some way. and Marvin Hall came up with a touchdown. Marvin Hall, a little bit more of a veteran, made a savvy play, was able to get in the end zone and cap off practice just like you would know. Marvin Hall, I mean, that is classic Marvin Hall, deep Hall, 44-yard bomb to end off practice. Okuda was good today, though. Okuda was in great position. The secondary looked amazing, and that's what we want to see. It looks like that starting role could be coming together. Didn't hear a lot about Amani today, but but yes, it looks really good. Again, if you guys want an update on the participation report, who is healthy and who is not, go check out the part one of this video. I'm glad we got all these takeaways. We got to hear about a lot of players that we didn't get to hear about before. Good thing from Tri from Romeo Cora. I haven't really heard about him at all. And also Logan Stenberg, who has been stepping it up. Again, if you guys want the participation report, you can go check out the last video, the part one of this one. Make sure you guys go check out the community. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.